This is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at the price elasticity of supply for both primary commodities and manufactured goods. First, let's take a few notes about the determinants of the price elasticity of supply. <clears throat> so the determinants, here let's use a different color so we can distinguish this. So the determinants of price elasticity of supply includes the following. One is length of time. How long does it take to produce the particular good or service? So for example, we're going to be using coffee, and coffee takes time to grow. All right, And because of that, the, the amount of time that's needed to produce coffee, we'll see that it has a fairly inelastic supply curve. Whereas a manufactured good like Nespresso capsules or coffee capsules, um, factories can produce a tremendous amount or number of capsules within a short period of time, making their uh, supply curve fairly elastic. Two, another factor that determines the elasticity of supply is uh, the mobility of factors of production. basically meaning how fast can a firm employ the resources needed to produce the, the good or service? How fast can they employ land, labor, and capital to increase their production? If it's difficult to employ those factors of production, then their supply curve will be inelastic. If firms are very fast in be, being able to source the resources that they need to produce, then their supply curve will be fairly elastic. Three, uh, spare capacity, spare or unused capacity. So that can include a factory where perhaps they have um, 10 robotic machines that can produce, but currently they're only using five. They have unused or spare capacity of an additional five robots. So if there's an order that comes in or if there's increased demand, the firm can employ those five remaining robots to produce. Four, this is the ability to store stock. So this is referring to the ability of a firm to store, let's say, outputs in a warehouse. So these are finished goods sitting in, in, a, in a warehouse and thus, if, it, if there's an order or an increase in demand, they can just ship out those outputs and meet the demand. So their, demand, their supply curve would be fairly elastic. And the last one is the rate at which costs increase. Now, an increase in cost will cause a uh, supply curve to shift. But the rate at which it's increasing can also impact the elasticity of supply. So if costs are rising for factors of production, that will not only shift the supply curve in, but also make it more inelastic. And if costs are perhaps decreasing or falling, that not only causes the supply curve to shift outward, but it can also make it more elastic, allowing the firm to employ more resources because they're cheaper. Okay. So those are the determinants that we should be taking into consideration to explain the elasticity of the supply curve. And we're going to uh, discuss some of those determinants in our applied example. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin to illustrate what the supply curve would look like for a primary commodity and what it would look like for a manufactured good or service. Okay, so primary commodities are um, resources that are extracted directly from the land. So if something is grown on the land, like coffee, and extracted, then it's a primary commodity. This includes wheat, barley, rice, uh, minerals, such as um, minerals and um, other types of ore, iron ore, uh, copper, aluminum. Um, can also include uh, fish, extracting fish from the sea or uh, timber from the land. So these are all primary
commodities. And what we would expect in terms of the elasticity of the supply curve is that it would be fairly uh, inelastic, right? The supply curve would have kind of a very vertical shape. So in terms of coffee, the supply of coffee is fairly inelastic because of the um, determinant of length of time, the amount of time it takes to grow coffee. So you can be starting off with a price for coffee, perhaps at P1. Just give me a second, sorry. So you can be starting off with a price for coffee at P1 with a quantity supplied at Q1 which is at point A, right here. And there could be a sudden increase in demand, the demand shifting outward, causing an increase in the price. And so the price, let's say, rises due to that increased demand um, to this point. From P1 to P2, and the quantity supplied increasing from Q1 to Q2 a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. We can see that the increase in price is greater than the increase in the quantity supplied. So by definition, right, when the let's say whoop, when the percent give me a second, when the percent change in price is greater than the percent increase and the quantity supplied, the PES is less than one. That's an inelastic supply curve. So the, uh, the elasticity of the supply curve for coffee could, let's say, just for an example, equals 0 0.2. So what does that mean? It's 0 0.2 over one. So every time the price of coffee rises by 1%, the quantity supplied only increases by 0.2%, so not a dramatic increase. And this is a result of length of time, the amount of time it takes to grow coffee, um, limiting the ability of coffee farmers to increase their quantity of supply. How about for manufactured goods? In this case, coffee is an input that's used to produce Nespresso capsules as the output that's consumed by the household the elasticity would be fairly elastic. We have kind of this type of shape. Here is, we'll say, let's say it's S2, okay? This is a result of Nespresso being able to source or get their coffee from a large number of coffee producers. So the supply of coffee here is coming from farmers. Now, how many farmers are involved in coffee production? says here 25 million small producers. So there's 25 million coffee producers worldwide. All right, so that provides a lot of um, suppliers of coffee beans to Nespresso. So if there's a disruption in coffee in let's say Vietnam, no problem, Nespresso can source coffee from um, Jamaica or from countries in Central America, or from some countries in Central Africa. So it's not an issue. And because they can easily mobilize factors of production or source factors of production, like the key input of coffee beans, Nespresso can really provide a, a, a dramatic increase in the quantity supply, even if the price of their capsules rises by a small margin. In addition, um, they have factories that can mass produce those capsules. And they can also source aluminum to produce the capsules from a large number of um, uh, aluminum miners worldwide. So that enables Nespresso to really ramp up or decrease production based on demand. So let's say price is at P1. With a quantity supplied at Q1. So here we have... P1 and here is Q1. 
And let's say that there's a, uh, a, an increase in demand along that supply curve, causing the price to rise. So price rises from P1 to P2. We can see that that um, increase in price is not that great compared to the significant increase in the quantity supplied. Thus, we can see that the percent change in quantity supplied is significantly greater than the percent change in price. Thus, the PES is greater than one, meaning it is very elastic. So perhaps the price elasticity um, of Nespresso capsules is 4.5. So if PES equals 4.5 for Nespresso capsules, what that means is that for every 1% increase in the price of coffee uh, capsules, that Nespresso can increase their output or the quantity supplied by 4.5% because they're able to easily mobilize factors of production like coffee and aluminum. In the case of coffee, they have 25 million coffee producers or farmers that they can source their coffee from to easily increase their production. In addition, they have factories where they're using machinery to mass produce those capsules, allowing them for mass production or a dramatic increase in production. And vice versa, right? If price was to fall in both cases, they can um, decrease their quantity supplied. So if price fell from P2 to P1, they can dramatically reduce their quantity supplied from Q2 to Q1. In the case of uh, primary commodities, the same thing. If price fell, uh, farmers can slowly reduce the quantity supplied. So let's go ahead and uh, analyze this as we would on a paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have two graphs. Graph A is the supply of coffee beans, which is a key input, for a manufactured good, which is illustrating graph B, the supply of Nespresso capsules, which is the output consumed by the household. So graph A is looking at a primary commodity, such as coffee beans, and graph B is looking at a manufactured good, such as Nespresso capsules. In both graphs, we're measuring quantity supplied on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. In graph A, we have an inelastic supply curve that's upward sloping according to the law of supply labeled S1. And in graph B, we have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S2 that is elastic or PES greater than one. In graph A, the supply curve is inelastic due to the determinant of length of time. It takes time to grow coffee. And in graph B, the determinant that is determining that the supply curve is elastic is the fact that they can easily mobilize factors of production, key inputs to increase output. In addition, they have the ability to store stock. So after they produce the Nespresso capsules, they can store them in a warehouse and quickly distribute them when there's an increase in demand. In graph A, let's say, for example, that we have a price for coffee at P1 with a quantity supply at Q1, which is at point A. And if there was an increase in price from P1 to P2, that would lead to an increase in the quantity supplied from Q1 to Q2, or a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. We'll notice that the percent change in price is greater than the percent change in quantity supplied, meaning that the supply curve is inelastic, or less than one. So for example, perhaps the PES for coffee beans is 0.2. Thus, for every 1% increase in price, there's only a 0.2% increase in the quantity supplied. In graph B, we have a price for coffee capsules at P1 with the quantity supplied at Q1, which is at point A. And if the price was to rise from P1 to P2, uh, Nespresso would be able to increase their output from Q1 to Q2, or from point A to point B. And we'll notice that the percent change in quantity supplied is greater than the percent change in price. Thus, the price elasticity of supply is greater than one. So for example, perhaps Nespresso capsules has a PES equal to 4.5, meaning that for every 1% increase in price, Nespresso can increase output or the quantity supplied by 4.5% due to their ability to quickly employ key factors of production, their ability to store stock, 
uh, and perhaps in some of their factories they have some spare capacity. All right, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you so much.